Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I am reading Psalms 37. Now, before I start, let me start with Pat's Two Cents. And then I'll finish with God's Word and go back to Pat's Two Cents, maybe. We'll see. Listen, I know we are right now in very troubling times between the weather and the anomalies and the issues with two crazy leaders that head up countries we don't know what's going to happen well i spent a long time talking to the lord trying to get a feel as to what i should do what is ahead of me should i do this should i do that should i even waste my time attempting the other because time may be too short to even bother so i'm asking god all these questions and What's going to become of us? And oh my goodness. And let me tell you, this is what God shared with me. And it was like a, um, oh, a reaffirmation of Psalms 91. Now, in Psalms 91, he promises divine protection. No evil shall befall thee. All of that. He promises having his angels set about girding us up, lest we hurt ourselves. He promises us good health and long life, which means to me, I'll be here until Jesus comes. All right. So this is what I want you to hear. I want you to hear this because it encouraged me so much last night. I wouldn't let God go. I just kept, okay, what else you want to share with me? What else you want to tell me? What else? What else? What else? <laughs> feed me, feed me. And it is so encouraging, you guys. When God encourages you himself, when God speaks into your life, into your spirit, it does something that no human being can do. And I want to share a very encouraging word. My biggest concern being a widow on a very low income is, Lord, will they take my house away from me? Lord, will I be without? You know, what if they don't have social security anymore? Should I stop my food stamps? Do you want me to get out of the system when it comes to them providing food? Do you want me to trust you? And I feel like he does. But I feel like he's allowing me to stay on the Medi-Cal because it's just good to have health care, the just-in-case part of life. But I just feel like God is saying, you're mine. I know how to take care of what belongs to me. You have no need to fear. And I relay that same message to you. Starting at verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed i'm going to repeat that trust in the lord and do good so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know the Pat's two cents. He can do, he can give you all the desires of your heart while all hell is breaking loose. You have your little corner of heaven all to yourself. God knows how to do that. Hmm. Woo! Five. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease. From, from anger. Cease from anger. Cease from anger. And forsake wrath. Mm. 
Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay, such as be of upright conversation. Well, their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time listen, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied pat's two cents hello word but <coughs> but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the lord shall be as the fat of lambs let me stop right there. Pat's two cents. This does not say your enemies and my enemies. It says the enemies of the Lord. Some enemies of the Lord, believe it or not, go to church. Some enemies of the Lord, believe it or not, preach the gospel. Some enemies of the Lord or right in your household might be you could be me that's why we have to examine ourselves constantly back to God's word alright but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs they shall consume into smoke they shall consume away the wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The step, excuse me, heartburn. <laughs> the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord holdeth him with his hand. I have seen, uh, excuse me, I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great 
power and spreading himself like a great like a green bay tree yet he passed away and lo he was not yeah I saw him but he could not be found mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace but the transgressors shall be destroyed together the end of the wicked shall be cut off but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord he is their strength in the time of trouble and the Lord shall help them and deliver them he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him mm. now if that Pat's two cents if that doesn't light your fire I need to put a firecracker up under you because I'm telling you almost every concern I had was named right there in that chapter Psalms 37 things I even forgot were in there I was oh I couldn't believe the answers God was giving me I'm telling you no matter how much we believe no matter how closely we try to walk with God as human beings we have to battle fear we have to battle we don't accept it we don't let it become a part of our lives fear doesn't move in and become our roommate no but we do have to battle it. And I'm telling you, when I start getting a little trepidation, stuff starts pounding away in my head, I go right to God because I enjoy his peace too much to let nonsense worry me when I got the one who's in control and who's on my side. Now, I hope this encourages you. Though the earth be... I got to read this because this... I, I just have to read it. You guys, give me a second. Let me get it. You've got to hear this because that is what feels like is happening right now. All right? So, sometimes I get into a lot of word. Some people don't want to hear it. Sorry, Charlie. But the word is life for me, literally. Listen. Listen. Psalms 46. Woo! I'm fighting the tears right now. I'm really fighting them. Okay. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, mm, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, listen, we've got floods, the waters are roaring, we've got the mountains shaking, we've got earthquakes, we've got all kind of of weather anomalies and from one minute to the next we don't know when the next popcorn is going to pop off in this country there will be islands disappearing we know that we know that there will be some parts of of different states carried into the midst of the sea we know that but here's the thing Verse 4, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Verse 6, yeah. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. 
he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. Pat's two cents. And there's some desolations going on, y'all. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Listen, Pat's two cents. I don't care how many missiles they aim your way. How many missiles come my way? God can burn them up in the clouds. He can drop them right there in the ocean. Because he's not going to let some stuff, he ain't going to let happen to his babies. Verse 10. And this is what I say to you. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Mm. Now listen, I don't care what's going on. Yeah, we're in the last days. Yeah, we're knocking on, we're right on the threshold of tribulation. We know that. We know the the mark of the beast is, is right, is, I mean, hey, it is right at the door. No matter what happens. See, they're trying to get us, This I hope you heard me say this is Pat's two cents. They're trying to get us conditioned to accept the fact that they're in control. To accept the fact that when they say hop, you know, we got to say how high. Well, I told you on one of the other videos, I do get help because I'm on 850 something a month. And because of that, I am very eligible for food stamps, so I took advantage of it. But now, God has been encouraging me. Trust me. Trust me. You are my minister, and I can't take care of you. Trust me. So now I have to call my caseworker and let her know she can stop the application process. Because God told me that he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And I say that to you. God will supply all your needs. Whatever you don't have, you will have if it's a need. I'm telling you. See, some things happen to some people because God has to use them in that tragedy. He needs his people even in tragedies. But also, there are some people who God has told to leave in so many ways. But if they don't have an ear to hear, you either, see when you hear, number one, you have to listen. Then comes the hearing. And once you have taken the time to listen, to ask, to listen, and to hear, once you have heard, even if it doesn't jive with you, even if you ain't feeling it, if you obey, safe, baby, safe in the arms of God. But if you disobey, like some children have done with their parents, you can pay with your life like some of them have. It's not God's punishment. It's a consequence. When you come out of God's, uh, out of obeying God, you are literally coming out from under the shelter, under the refuge of the Almighty. So then you are at the mercy of the elements, not God. Because you have chosen to come out of his ark of safety. And you have chosen to lean to your own understanding. But see, the Bible tells us not to lean unto our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. 
So this is the time for acknowledging, y'all. Let's start acknowledging, please, while you're safe, before things get more dangerous, more haphazard, more precarious. We have got to seek. We have got to ask. We've got to have an ear to hear. Then we have to listen and obey. And when we listen, we have to trust in order to obey. You hear me? Just being in Christ does not give you an immunity. It's lining up with everything he says that keeps us safe. Keeps us safe, you guys. Okay, this is going to be too long, so let me stop. God bless you, and I hope you're encouraged like I was when I read that. I'm still encouraged. I just want to pass it on.